The Deliverance is the new film from Oscar-nominated director Lee Daniels, the man behind Precious, The Butler, and The United States vs. Billy Holiday. Written by David Cogshaw and Elijah Bynum, it stars Andrew Day, who Daniels brought into the acting world with her Oscar-nominated role in The United States vs. Billy Holiday, and also featuring a cast of Oscar names including Glenn Close, Anjanou Alice Taylor, and Monique. It's a generic possession horror movie that went straight to Netflix. Inspired by a true story, it's about Andrew Day's character moving into a new house and, surprise, weird demonic shit starts happening. As expected, the acting is the best part. The points where it feels like there may be something great in this movie are the scenes before all the scary stuff where it focuses on the family drama. Lee Daniels got big off of making dramas and he's at home here. Nothing particularly interesting happens, but it feels like if it stayed down this route and built a story that instead focused on that kind of thing, it could have been, if not a great movie, then at least an almost decent Oscar bait. But despite all the talent behind and in front of the camera, this is not interested in any of that. The rest of it is the same old thing you've seen in countless ripoffs of The Conjuring. Demons, kids acting weird and possessed, a climax where people levitate and scream at the demon. It copies a lot of the cliches, and some of the allegedly scary parts, especially near the end, come across as more unintentionally funny. This feels like just another demonic horror film that would normally, if it gets released in theaters at all, would come out in like January or something and make like $3 on a budget of $1. But this one somehow managed to get an Oscar caliber cast and director. And they're all better than this. These are the men. Nothing very unusual about them. Suburban guys like you or your neighbor. Nothing very unusual about them until they decided to spend one weekend canoeing down the Kahulawasi River. Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is from the original creator himself, Tim Burton. It was written by Alfred Goh and Miles Millar, creators of Wednesday and Smallville and writers of other movies like Spider-Man 2. Based on a story they wrote alongside Seth Graham Smith, writer for the Lego Batman movie and Dark Shadows, and author of Pride and Prejudice and Zombies and Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. We follow the family again, although not the ghost couple. The daughter has grown and is now the host of a paranormal reality show and a single mother to a skeptic played by Jenna Ortega, who's... Yeah, basically the spinning image of her mother as a teen. Ortega was also in Wednesday, which also had heavy input from Tim Burton, and in both of them she pretty much captures the vibe that he loves to put in his movies. Don't be surprised if she ends up being his new Johnny Depp over the next few years. Anyway, a lot of stuff happens and Beetlejuice and the rest of the spirit world work their way into their lives again. This movie is Tim Burton back in full Tim Burton mode. It's bizarre, it's quirky, it's macabre, but not really. And it's what a legacy sequel should be, something that feels like the original, except bigger, with a far more complex plot and a whole new cast of characters to go along with seeing where everybody is right now. But underneath all that, the vibe still feels like the original and not just a cynical modern day CGI fest imitating the original. It heavily uses practical effects, so things like the sandworm look the same and didn't magically change its appearance to look less like stop motion animation, but the story still goes to places that expand on this world. There are a few shots of nostalgia, but it's not a total nostalgia fest. The story is still interesting, and it will leave you wondering how all the subplots will converge. It's full of humor and moments that feel like classic Tim Burton. And once again, Michael Keaton steals the show as Beetlejuice. He plays it just as well as he did in the 80s. And the same can be said for the other returning cast members as well. Renona Ryder is great as the leading lady. Catherine O'Hara lends just a bit of her Shit's Creek character to her performance in a way that works pretty well and doesn't feel like a betrayal of her old character. And there are some fresh new faces as well. I've already summed up Jenna Ortega's part here, but another welcome addition is Willem Dafoe. A main complaint I hear about it is that it's overstuffed. I guess now that I think about it, not everything came together as well as it could have in the end. 
Like the subplot involving Beetlejuice's ex-wife, I liked her. Her introduction was one of the many high points in the movie, but I guess in the end she didn't really have that much of an impact on anything. I also wasn't a big fan of the ending scenes. That's something I knew right away before thinking about all that other stuff. I would have liked it pretty much in any other context, but having it be at the end was weird and not in a good Tim Burton way. It really undermines the happy ending here. It's probably just sequel bait. I guess you can't have Beetlejuice Beetlejuice without Beetlejuice Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, so get ready for that in 30 something years from now. But despite that, this is still a very fun time, a worthy sequel, and the best movie Burton's made in some time. It's kinda like if the plot of a more complicated and insidious movie was given a live action cartoon treatment, which fits in perfectly with the original, which was basically the same but for a sort of The Others sequel on crack, vague spoilers for The Others. It's not as good as the original, very few things are, but this is still the textbook example of a legacy sequel done right. Mm -hmm.